In the last presentation, we examined strategies for developing a good thesis idea. Now, you may be wondering, after I develop the thesis idea, how do I transform this idea into a good essay? In this session, we'll be looking at ideas for developing your essay. I am sure that many of you have heard or used the five paragraph essay. Often in preparation for writing an essay, students habitually and routinely consider and adopt the five paragraph structure. The five paragraph structure is a prescriptive approach to writing an academic essay. And it suggests that your essay only needs five paragra paragraphs, which includes an introduction, three paragraphs in the body of your essay, and a concluding paragraph. But this approach can be problematic because it may restrict your ideas or thinking process and cause you to force them into an unsuitable format for the specific ideas that you wish to develop at this time. This five paragraph approach causes you to assume that every essay you write should or can only carry one paragraph introduction and that somehow you cannot write more than three paragraphs to develop your thesis idea. And so it therefore hinders proper and comprehensive development of your essay. And it may also hinder creativity and originality and depth. It's not suitable for or adaptable to every rhetorical strategy and to develop every thesis idea. It also restricts your ability to think critically. So in this presentation, I'm arguing that while the five paragraph approach may be a good fit or place to start and may be useful for some timed writing tasks or for some essays, it is too prescriptive and limited for others. And so I will present you with other ideas for organizing the essay according to your thesis idea or the thesis idea that you have outlined. So let's say we are writing an essay on the topic gender roles, or as in this case, that a more specific topic may be how socialization influences gender roles or stereotypical gender roles. And so we have a thesis statement that says, despite differences in ethnic, religious, or social backgrounds of various groups of people, their socialization is still directly influenced by the roles women and men are expected to play in sustaining life and culture. Of course, this is pretty straightforward statement, a pretty obvious statement, it seems. Um, now, we can develop this thesis idea in one or more ways. And so, we may wish to give some perspective about how religious, ethnic, and maybe social groups or social status of um, people in a society, how they treat the, how these influence the treatment of socialization, or as a result of their belief system, how of the socialization is treated and so then we can situate the thesis idea so what i'm suggesting here is that we provide a context in the introduction and then um put, uh, put your thesis statement last and so this is in keeping with what academic or conventional academic texts suggest that we should have or we should place the thesis statement as the last our final statement in the first paragraph. Now, it does not have to be this way. We can switch it around. It can be the first statement in the essay and then we provide context after. Right? It all depends on what you desire to do or see or how you decide to see your essay organized. And then in consideration of the word still would suggest that this was happening before or um, these gender roles or this type of social socialization occurred before and it's still occurring now, um, we may wish to give some historical perspective about how girls or boys were socialized then. And then we can give, we could provide 
some scope or limit the scope and say then as in maybe in the 1950s or some period before and then we can compare and contrast this with how they are socialized today all right so let's look at it again a little more closely so hopefully this slide presents a clearer picture so we said that in your introductions, there is a possibility that you can provide some context or perspective about how religious, ethnic, and social groups treat socialization differently as a result of their belief system. So you could provide a general statement about this. And then we could go on to the body where we can break it down. And so how do we break it down? Well, let's say we could talk about two different sections. We could talk about then, and we could talk about now, All right? And so if we're talking about then, let's say our then takes up two paragraphs or possibly three paragraphs. So we would have paragraph one where that in main idea might be that we're comparing and contrasting how men are expected to function in various societies, right? And how this influences the ways, the way or ways boys are socialized. All right, so here again, we, are, we could be mentioned in various societies or various cultures or ethnic groups or maybe group, uh, groups of various social status, right? And saying how their belief system uh, influences how they will socialize boys. All right, so we could say, or we could say, we could add both boys and girls in one paragraph, or we could you choose that say that we're going to just look at how boys are socialized in one paragraph, All right? And then, but we, we cannot just make the statement. We need to explain it well, and we need to support it. So this is the essence of a paragraph, right? So we have to support it with either facts, examples, maybe stories or what we call anecdotes, little short, stories that will um, support or explain the point that you're making in the paragraph or you can provide testimony or cite sources or the sources of information that will help you to explain that point and then let's say in paragraph two now we let me so in paragraph one we decide that we are going to do the boys so now in paragraph two we're going to compare and contrast how women are expected to function and how this influences the way or ways in which girls are socialized and then we do something similar we provide facts or what but you can provide all you don't need to provide facts and examples and stories and everything you maybe choose one or two kinds of evidence or support and information to explain the argument or points that you are making in that paragraph all right and again this is the essence of a paragraph you have your main idea and you have supported information and they do not have to come in that order again and then let's say now the next section of our body so we we basically have two sections then and so this is not you notice that this is kind of deviating from the five paragraph rule where we just have three paragraphs so in this case we have two sections but then we also but we have four paragraphs or it could have possibly have more than more than this number of paragraphs and so now on the other side where we have now we have paragraph three and we could talk about compare we could sorry be, our main idea may be compared and contrast contrast now men are expected to function how this influences the ways boys are socialized today right and again you provide facts examples stories and so on or whatever you need to support it and then similarly in paragraph four we can compare and contrast how women are expected to function and how this influences the ways girls are socialized today and similarly you support it so now let's look at another example of how we can develop the same thesis idea and so i have repeated the thesis idea here and it says despite differences in ethnic religious or social backgrounds of various groups of people their socialization is still directly influenced by the roles women and men are expected to play in sustaining life and culture. And so in this, this um, approach, we could add another layer, level of complexity to our comparison by discussing um, socialization approaches 
or the socialization norms of groups of people in Guyana, for example, and show how they directly impact stereotypical gender roles. So paragraph, well, let's skip the introduction. The introduction will possibly provide a context, but let's look at the body of the essay now. So then we have paragraph one of the body. And so we look at one religious group or one ethnic group or one social group, one group with a group of a certain social status, right? However, you may want to define that. And so in this paragraph, you want to talk about the norms, their beliefs or cultures and how culture or cultures and how this may impact the socialization strategies for gender roles. And of course, you provide support. And then paragraph two of the body, we do something similar. We provide, we present or um, introduce another group whether it's a religious group, an ethnic group, uh, or a group of a certain social status, right, or social economic status, right, and we talk about their beliefs, their norms, and how these impacts um, socialization for gender roles, and again, we support it, and, and like I mentioned earlier, it does not necessarily have to be in this order, and then in the third paragraph of the body again we do the same thing we find another group or well we're not just randomly choosing groups of course they must be linked to related in some way right um, then in the fourth paragraph we can do the same thing and we can do the same thing in the fifth paragraph so it doesn't have to be limited to three paragraphs and then of course we need a conclusion and your conclusion does not could be it could be one paragraph but it doesn't have to be one paragraph too so let us examine another thesis idea and brainstorm for ways in which we may develop it so we have this statement though there are many benefits of utilizing standardized tests in education they do not accurately measure students competencies and skills in any given area so the first thing is that we may want to ask the question why. Um, well, we have part of the why, but maybe we can ask. We can ask why is it that the these tests don't measure students' uh, competence and skills? So we may want to ask why. But then we also have another part of this why. Um, it says because they provide a skewed perspective of students competencies or performance. Now, uh, this particular idea, you will notice that the ideas that may flow from it will be subheadings or sub um, ideas under the major idea. So for example, students possess other skills which are not measured by the test will be, uh, it's not a separate idea, but it's a, it's a is one that flows from from this one here so we have this major idea idea here and then this one flows this is the second one or this is a why but it flows from there and then this one here further explains why we're saying that they provide a good perspective of students um, competencies and finally we have that evaluation should measure a comprehensive set of skills that students have acquired or developed during the learning process. So here you have it and you can have an entire essay like this. And of course, we are talking here about the body of the essay, right? Because you will still need to provide your introduction and your conclusion, which is not represented in the points that we have outlined here. Also, this is just an idea because you may have other ideas or other ways that you may wish to develop or to explain this thesis idea here. So let's briefly discuss what goes into the paragraph or let's emphasize what goes into a paragraph. 
you have your main idea and then you have supporting information or what you may call evidence and evidence can be of various kinds you have facts you have examples you have statistical information which will be facts right um you have information from external sources like testimonies you can have an anecdote you can have certain kinds of illustrations and that gives you a paragraph right so now it again does not have to be in the order like that order that i have mentioned it could be that you you provide the evidence the facts the support information and then you um, present your main idea right and and another way to put it main idea plus evidence gives us a paragraph now let us examine this paragraph aisha abdel majid tells of her experience in an interview with rogia mustafa abu sharif an anthropologist born in sudan Majid describes that her cutting occurred when she was only six years old. She recalls being taken by her mother and two aunts to the midwife in the neighborhood known for performing circumcisions. She is told that she is going to be purified. Upon this realization, Aisha tries to break free but is forced down and ordered onto a bed of ropes with a hole in the middle. She accounts, they held me tight while the midwife started to cut my flesh without anesthetics. I screamed till I lost my voice. The midwife was saying to me, do you want me to be taken into police custody? After the job was done, I could not eat, drink, or even pass urine for three days. I remember one of my uncles who discovered what they did to me threatened to press charges against his sisters. They were afraid of him and they decided to bring me back to the midwife. In her sternest voice, she ordered me to squat on the floor and urinate. It seemed like the most difficult thing to do at that point, but I did it. I urinated for a long time and was shivering with pain. Aisha continues on, though it took her a long time to recover. Looking back now over 40 years later, she understands the motivations of her mother wanting her to be clean but it was a lot of anguish clearly female circumcision is an inhumane practice justified with ignorant beliefs and false benefits now you will notice that in this paragraph there is a narrative or an account of something that transpired many years ago and it is told from the perspective of the person who experienced the, this um, incident and so you have the evidence first or supporting information that comes first in the paragraph and then in the uh, the final sentence you have the main idea or the topic sentence of the paragraph and so it's in this order now let us look at the sec the next paragraph that follows because this is a very good example of a transition a transition from one paragraph to another this is one testimony similar to millions of instances that occur each year three separate studies published in bioethics details the severity of the types of circumcisions which vary greatly by a region a study in sierra leone found that 39% of females had undergone the clitoridectomy, 60% the excision, and about 1% the infibulations. The same year, 1982, a study was done in Somalia, which showed that 80% of the operations were excisions. The article also in includes a study done in 1993 that found that the pervasiveness of genital mutilation in Africa ranged from 10% in Tanzania to 98% in Djibouti. Regardless of how evasive the genital cutting done, the low estimate found in clinical report from the, from the Alan Gottmacher Institute more than 100 million women have had some level of female genital circumcision. It is also estimated that 2 million more girls 
from ages 4 to 12 years old will be cut annually. A motivational factor behind this testimony was for purification. Now here in this paragraph, we notice two things. The first is that the main idea is at the top and that the writer uses the information that from the previous paragraph to transition into this paragraph um, to, to show that there are many other test, such testimonies that, as we have read in the previous paragraph. And then the writer goes on to present other testimonies or other information, other kinds of supporting information, like statistical information, and so on, and other accounts that prove the point or attempts to um, prove that there are a number of other cases of female genital circumcision. And finally, let's talk briefly about the conclusion of the essay. What goes into the conclusion? First, the conclusion might be, maybe, a reinforcement of your position or a profound articulation or re-articulation of your pers perspective. Now, it's not necessarily a restatement because a restatement of what you have said before can be repetitious. All right, so it's not that you're restating the point, but you might be emphasizing your point um, in a different way than you have stated before. And then you could have, uh, all of these are optional, right? But you will have to decide depending on your, uh, the type of essay that you're writing, your strategies that you're using for writing. So you could have a personal or more effective response to the issue. Right? While, while you may have had a more logical response or logical flow and organization and provide evidence in your essay, at the end of your essay, now you can perhaps offer a more effective um, response or a more personal response to the particular issue. And then, or you may want to do, um, consider, or mention what more could be said or researched or done to find out about the study or, or about the issue. And then you can also offer again, depending on your strategies and the type of essay that you're writing or the topic, you may offer recommendations or solutions that you may have read about or that you have in your mind. And finally, you can or you should stir a needed response by inviting some sort of resolution or change of heart or action towards the um, issue or so that the issue can be resolved. This brings us to the end of the presentation and I hope that it has helped you to understand a little more about the writing process and about how you can develop your essay from a thesis statement that you may have outlined. Please remember also that even as you write and you continue to read recursively, your thesis idea may be modified as you gain new information and new experiences. And it will also inform the writing process um, as you go along.